Okay, here is example number 1C from 4-7, Optimization Problems. It asks us to find which points on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared are closest to the point 0 comma 2. So I don't know about you, but the first thing I did is I tried to um, graph a picture so that I can kind of visualize what's going on. And so I knew this equation was going to be a parabola. I knew that it was going to open down and I knew that it was going to be shifted up 4. I also knew that there was a point that I wanted to see um, was closest to this graph, so the point 0, comma 2. And so what are we trying to find here? Are we trying to maximize or minimize? Well, it looks like we're trying to find the point on the graph that's closest to this point 0, comma 2. So it looks like I want to minimize, and what do I want to minimize? Well, it looks like I want to minimize the distance between two points, right? And so the first step, remember, when, optimi when optimizing is to try to find an equation that we're trying to optimize. What are we trying to find the minimum of? Well, in this problem, we're trying to find the minimum distance between two points. And so we should know the distance between two points, that there's an equation for that, right? The problem is, in this equation, there's way too many variables. I see one, two, three, four, five different variables. And so we have to know something about this problem so that we can minimize the number of variables in our equation. And so because I know that one of the points is the point 0, 1, one of the x's is 0, one of the y's is 2, I should be able to plug that information into my formula. And so now I end up with a new equation that says the square root of y minus 2 squared plus x squared. Now I still have lots of different variables. I have a d, I have a y, I have an x. And so I still want to try to get down to um, a least amount of variables possible. And so do we know anything else about this problem where we could possibly get rid of the y or get rid of the x and put them all into the same variable? Well, if you look back at the original problem, doesn't it tell us that y equals 4 minus x squared? And so if I solve that equation for x squared, could I say that really x squared is the same thing as 4 minus y? So that means in my equation that I'm trying to optimize, I can get rid of this x squared and really call it 4 minus y. And so now if you look at my equation, I have one variable, or I have two variables, but I can find the rate at which my distance is changing with respect to y, and so then I wouldn't have to do my implicit differentiation. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation by foiling out. I'm going to combine like terms, and I end up getting a new distance equation of y squared minus 5y plus 8 all underneath the square root. And this is the equation that we're trying to optimize. We're trying to find the minimum value, right? And so we want to figure out when the derivative goes from negative to positive so we can find that minimum distance. Now, you could find the derivative of this equation using chain rule. Or if you think about it, if I can minimize the stuff on the inside of that square root, I can find the smallest possible value. Well, then taking his square root, isn't that still going to be the smallest possible value. So with or without that square root, if I can find the minimum, then it should be the minimum no matter what. And so to make my life a little bit easier, what I can do is just focus on the stuff on the inside. And if I can find where y squared minus 5y plus 8 is the smallest, well taking his square root is still going to be the smallest. And that makes it a lot easier when I go to find the derivative then. And so if this is my equation now that I'm trying to find the minimum of, I can find my derivative, I can find my critical numbers by setting it equal to 0, and I can find that I have a critical number at 5 halves, at y equals 5 halves. Now, we always want to make sure that we found a minimum and not accidentally a maximum. So what I need to do now is I need to do a sign chart. Remember, I need to take that critical number, my y equals 5 halves, and I need to make sure that my derivative goes from negative to positive so that I have a minimum and not accidentally a maximum. So taking my derivative, which is this 2y minus 5, if I plug a number just less than 5 halves, I plug a number greater than 5 halves, what do I get for the signs in my derivative? Well, I ended up getting negative and then positive, which is perfect, right? That's what I wanted. I wanted to figure out when my function 
uh, decreases and then increases, has a relative minimum. And so that happens when y equals 5 halves. Now, the question says, what point or points on the graph are closest? And we just found y values. And so in order to have a point, don't I need an x and a y? And so what can I use to figure out the x values if y is 5 halves? Well, I should be able to use this original equation that says y equals 4 minus x squared. I should be able to plug in my 5 halves wherever I see a y, and I should be able to solve for x. So I subtracted 4 from both sides. I divided by negative 1. I square rooted. Now be careful. Remember, any time you square root, you need to add plus or minus to your answer. And I ended up getting two values. I ended up getting x equals positive square root of 3 halves and negative square root of 3 halves. And so it looks like I have two points that are closest to the curve and the point 0, 2. Now, does it make sense to have two points? Well, sure. If my point is right here in the middle of my uh, graph, can I have a distance that's small um, going to the left and a distance that's small going to the right and it be the same minimal distance? So it does make sense that I possibly have two different points that are closest in distance. Positive, uh, rad, positive square root of 3 over 2 comma 5 halves and negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 5 halves. I have a minimum distance from that graph to the point 0 comma 2.